Ashley. I run a sewing blog called Sincerely Sews, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to make these adorable holiday gnomes. I'll tell you where you can get the pattern for free, so grab a cup of coffee and let's get started. The first step is to print the free holiday gnome pattern from my blog at SincerelySews.com. This is a free pattern to download, and it can be printed at home on any regular printer on eight and a half by 11 paper. The pattern also includes three optional motifs to add an embroidery design to the gnome's hat. If you'd like to make a smaller gnome, you can print the pattern at a smaller scale. Here I have 90%, 80%, or 70%. When the pattern is printed out at 100% scale, the gnome will measure about 21 inches from the tip of his hat to the base of his feet. The supplies you will need are fabric for the main body, contrast fabric for the hat, fabric for the shoes, a skin tone, some faux fur for the beard. You will want to use some tacky glue or some fray check around the edges of the faux fur some polyfill for stuffing, some rice, beans, or plastic beads to weight the bottom, and some embroidery floss if you're planning to add any decorative designs to the hat. This project really makes a great scrap buster. All of these fabrics that I'm using here are just leftovers from other projects. It doesn't take a lot of fabric. Just keep in mind, some of the pieces are cut out once, like the upper front, while other pieces are cut out twice, like the base, or even four times for the boots, so that you end up with two sets of feet. Instead of pinning my pieces, I like to trace around them with a little bit of tailor's chalk, or you can use a pilot friction pen to trace out on lighter fabric. When you go to cut out the beard, Make sure you're paying attention to the direction of the pile of the fur so that it's pointing down. You want to flip your faux fur over to the reverse side and lay out your pattern piece. I have just enough room here. You're going to want to have something to mark it with. I just grab a sharpie and I trace around the beard. Here's when you want to add some fray check or some glue around the perimeter of the beard. That way it's really gonna help cut down on all that extra fluff from falling off of the beard later on. I like to use Fray Check because it dries a little bit faster. I'm just go chopping at it with scissors because then you're gonna lose some of that glorious beard hair. When you're cutting it out, you wanna just make sure that you take very tiny snips and stay very close to the knit part of the fabric and try to keep away from all of this fluffy pile. Here's an example where the fabric was cut straight through with scissors, not taking mind of the pile. And on the other side, I just took small little snips and tried to avoid the extra fluff. The first step is to assemble the arms and legs. If you're going to make a gnome that doesn't have arms and legs, go ahead and skip ahead in the video right here. Make sure that you lay out each leg and arm so that you end up with two of each side. We'll be flipping each piece up. I recommend pinning it in place just so that you don't get them mixed up. And then we'll take it over to the machine and sew a quarter inch seam. When you're ready to assemble the two sides of your arms and legs, make sure that you've pressed the seam allowance upwards, match up the opposite sides, seam to seam. I like to stick a little pin right in the seam so that I make sure everything stays lined up correctly. And then go ahead and stitch at a quarter inch of seam allowance all the way around. Make sure that you leave the top open because that's where we're gonna be inserting our polyfill stuffing. Okay. 
After you've gotten the hand sewn, you're going to want to clip in certain places, like clipping in, clip in to make sure that the hand will turn. And then you're also going to want to add a few little triangular clips around the curve of the thumb and the rest of the hand. This is going to make turning it right side out a lot easier. Just make sure you don't cut across the stitching you've just done. Now it's ready to turn right side out. Then I like to go and take this over to the ironing board and make sure that I iron these seams open so that I can get as much stuffing as I need to in there. When I press these, I take a half inch wooden dowel and I slide it into the leg. Like that. Then I can take my iron and give that seam a nice press. So when it's time to stuff the arms and the legs, it can be kind of difficult to get the little bits of stuffing into the nooks and crannies. So all you need, my stuffing actually came with this stick, the amazing original polyfill stuffing tool. It's just a stick, just a wooden dowel. Or you could use a knitting needle or a piece of a hanger. Anything that you can use to just kind of push the polyfill right down in there. But it's a lot easier if you just take a little piece at a time instead of trying to shove a whole big wad in all at once. You're just gonna have a hard time. So once you've got your leg piece all stuffed, you don't want it to be super tight that you can barely squeeze it, but you want it to be thick enough so that it holds its shape. You'll see you have the leg here with the seam running up the center front of the leg. And then you also have another seam running up the back. You wanna take each seam and press them together like that. Make sure you get all your stuffing poked down. And then we're gonna go ahead and sew across here at a scant quarter inch seam. Now the next step is to create a knee bend. That way the legs of the gnome can kind of flop down if you sit them on a surface. So to get the knee, you just find the center of the leg from about, you know, halfway up. Pinch it and wiggle your fingers back a little bit. This is gonna help move the stuffing in there out of your way so that you can create a horizontal seam running across the leg that will help it have a knee. So just right there, just keep wiggling that stuffing out of your way. And you'll have a thigh and a lower leg left. And now we have a leg with a knee bend. Go ahead and repeat that for the other leg. And now we have two complete legs and two complete arms. Just set these aside for later. The next step is to sew the shaping on the back and the upper front. First we'll fold these pieces lengthwise and then we'll stitch the curved seam at the top. After you've stitched these curves, go ahead and clip into the seam allowance, making sure that you don't clip over the seam you've just sewn. Making these clips will make it a lot easier for this curved seam to turn out. Then go ahead and press your seams open or to one side. The next step is to take the lower front and the beard. Go ahead and lay the beard on top of the front, then baste this in place, being sure to keep the extra fluff out of the way. After you've basted the beard in place, you will take your upper front and line the curved seam up and stitch. After you've stitched that seam, Go ahead and clip the curve and just this face part. That is going to help the face lay a lot flatter with no ripples behind it. Just make sure that you don't clip over your stitching line because then you're going to end up with a big hole. There's the front face. He's starting to look like a gnome. Now we're going to get our arms. When you lay off the arms, you want it to look like the gnome could just reach up and give you a hug. So notice that the thumbs are pointing up. You're going to want to pin your arms in place, 
finding the placement guides, sit them over the top of the beard, but centered over these placement guides. Here's one arm. And find his other arm with the thumb up. And center this one again, right over those marks. If it seems like the stuffing's getting in the way, just go ahead and massage that down a little. And you'll end up with something like this. Now the tricky part about assembling this is it does start to get a little bit bulky with the arms on the inside, but it is totally doable. The next thing to do would be to take the back piece and with right sides together, match up the top seam and continue pinning all the way down the sides, making sure that the arms don't get caught in the other seam. Now we're going to stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance all the way up and around this curve, but make sure you leave the bottom open. After you've got that curve sewn, go ahead and clip little notches into the upper curve because that's going to help this turn right side out a lot easier. The next step is to add the legs if you're using them, and here's where things can get a little bit tricky. All these arms and legs and beard get shoved right up in here, and it can seem a little bit tight, but I promise you there's enough room. It will all fit. If you shove the arms up into the head, it'll make it a little bit easier. And then when you put your feet on, you want to make sure that the feet are going to kick forward. Otherwise, he's not going to look right. So when you go to put the feet in, make sure that the right side or the front side of your leg is touching the right side of your fabric. So make sure you have your toes, point, toes pointing forward. This will be touching the right side of the inside of the body. And just shove that right in there and center each leg over the placement marks. You want it right like that. The next step will be to add the base. The base is cut two, and we're gonna treat each of these layers for now as if they're one piece of fabric. The important thing is that you leave this opening here for filling once you attach the base. These two layers will create a pocket where we'll insert rice, beans, or plastic beads, and that's gonna give the gnome uh, a weighted bottom to sit down on. That way he won't tip over. You'll see on my finished gnome, I've stitched across the back here. So in the very base, we've got two layers of fabric that hold the rice together, and his, the rest of his body will end up getting filled with the polyfill. These mark the side seam and the center front, with the opening in the back. So go ahead and pin these ovals all the way around, matching the side seam. Here's what this bottom looks like. It's a lot, it's a tight seam. It's kind of a tight oval, but don't worry. Just take it slow and you'll get it. So here you can see the two layers of the base create a little pocket. And then we also have the main body that opens up and this is the fun part where you get to pull your gnome right side out. So just find one of these appendages and pull it right out. Now that we've got him turned right side out, we can see that he's really starting to take shape. And this is what it'll look like. When you flip him over, you can see he's got the big opening for the main part of the body. That will get filled with more polyfill. And then you can see the two layers of the base oval create a smaller pocket. This is where we're gonna stick the rice, beans, or plastic beads later on so that he has a weighted bottom. The next step really is just to grab more polyfill and just get right up in there. Right up that behind. The next thing that you'll need is some rice, beans, or plastic beads to fill in this pocket.
Then we're going to tuck all the seams back in and really carefully hand sew all of these layers together using a mattress stick. Kind of move those rice bits around just to redistribute them and now you have a gnome that sits up but he needs a hat and a nose for the nose we're going to sew gathering stitches all the way around the edge at a quarter of an inch now the next thing you can see already it wants to start puckering so pull the underside or the bobbin threads and just start cinching this in. And you'll see that you have a little pouch shape that starts to form. Now you get more polyfill and start stuffing. The nose is arguably the most difficult part of this entire project because it's so small and fussy. On other gnomes, I've seen people use big wooden beads or pom-poms. So if this nose piece is just really giving you fits, you could consider another option. You could use a button, a wooden bead. I've even seen some people form them out of clay, but I have all this fabric on hand, so I decided to keep this one with fabric. All right, so after you start to stuff this, stuff as much as you can, and you're going to want to pull these threads tight again. Pull them as tight as you can. And you'll end up with a little nose, just like that. Try to tuck all of these seams under. And then take all four of your gathering tails and tie them together in a knot. Now you're going to be left with a little wad of something that looks kind of like this. And don't worry that we can see the stuffing here. That's perfectly normal because we're going to be stitching this down by hand to the face of the gnome. The next step will be to affix the nose piece right above the beard line and the center of the face. Right there. And you can see, you can just get all of the excess seam allowance tucked under as you sew. We're going to be sewing right along this area here, right here to stick it down to the face right like that in fact some of it might even overlap onto the beard and that is a-okay just make sure that you sink down into the cotton fabric below the beard so that you don't end up with a nose that's lifting up later now the last thing that he needs is his hat i've included four optional embroidery motifs but you can choose any design you like. The first one I tried out the snowflake, but I think on this one, I'll try the Christmas tree. Just center your design on the hat where you'd like it to be. Then I like to use these friction pens that erase to mark off my design. Then all you have to do is connect the dots with some embroidery floss. If you're having a hard time threading your needles, I like to use these flossers. You can find them in the toothbrush aisle or get them from your dentist. They look just like this. And they're much easier to stick through a needle. And you can just put your thread through this big loop and pull it through. Much easier than fussing around with all those layers of your embroidery floss. I went ahead and gave this tree a blast of steam with my iron. Now we can go ahead and put right sides together and stitch around these sides of the hat, leaving the bottom edge open because this is where we will form the brim of the hat. Before I turn my hat right side out, I'm gonna go ahead and clip off the excess at the tip, maybe a little bit here. This is just going to make it a lot easier to turn the hat right side out and still have a nice point. 
You could even go ahead and put just a little dab of fray check at the tip of the hat to help keep it from coming undone later. Now we'll get our hat back out and I'll use my metal stick to carefully poke that point right out. I went ahead and gave the side seams of the hat a press and now I'm just going to give it a double roll hem and it will be complete. And there's his hat. The last thing to do is to give him a good lint rolling because there will be polyfill and beard hair everywhere. And then put on his hat. If you want to, you could tack his hat down on the sides, but since these are just going to be holiday decor sitting on a shelf, I think that the hat will stay on just fine. And here's the finished gnomes, ready to decorate your house for Christmas and maybe get into a little mischief. Thanks so much for joining me for this gnome sewing tutorial. If you make your own gnome, I would really love to see what you come up with. Tag me on social media so I can see. I'm at Sincerely Sews on all platforms. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more sewing tutorials. Have a happy holiday! And now we just stitch his little butthole. Now we stitch his butt closed using a mattress stitch. Doing it again and again and again until it's right the right time. Oh. Oh.